All right, thank you, and thanks everyone for coming. Uh, hopefully, uh, this is kind of a lightning session, so I'm going to give you lots of good technical information. I think one of the things that we have here is, is of course, many of you people know about the Oracle database, um, but you may not know how interested Oracle is in things like Apache Spark. A lot of our major customers are using Apache Spark, and I want to talk to you about some innovations that we're putting into the Spark processor to accelerate what we're doing with Apache Spark. So Spark is a very exciting ecosystem. For those of us at Oracle, it's a great ecosystem for analytics. It is fast and scalable because of its clean design. And one of the reasons I like it is it speaks SQL. Now this is not because of my expertise in the Oracle database, it's because SQL gives us a very powerful, concise way of doing data, scientists, getting, or data science, getting our data together. So having Spark SQL speak data frames and data sets is an area that we can apply hardware innovations to. So I want to talk a little bit about that. So when we look at analytics, part of the reason we're interested in it, old time analytics used to be about your data. It could have been in the Oracle database, DB2, Informix, what have you. And then we had all this external data. And of course, what we're trying to do is do analytics now, not only on your proprietary data, but all of the data that's relevant to us out in the world as well. And, and um, Apache Spark really plays into that. So one of the things I want to talk about today, Matei started talking about the compute bottleneck and where we're at. And is it true? And part of it's true. So what I have here is I've plotted out the last four generations of x86 performance on a per core basis. It's been flat. Why aren't we up in the upper right hand corner? We have Newer technologies and hardware, why aren't we getting up there? Reality is we are, but we have to do it with innovation within the processor. If you notice here, I've put Spark, Spark with a C, came from Sun Microsystem, which Oracle bought. Um, and what we've been doing is we've been innovating to improve per core performance with each generation. And you can see there the S7. Uh, I already have next generation in my lab right now that my performance engineers are working there. And follow that line up and to the right. This is significant. I'm talking about over 2x faster per core performance. That can save you in licensing costs or in the cloud. You may be thinking, oh, but that's a marketing slide. There's the actual data. Let me bounce back and forth between them. So one of the things that we did in the Spark processor was we said, Java, JVM performance is critical, as well as database performance. We need to make sure that we are innovating both of those areas. So that's been a target for the Spark processor. Now you may be saying, oh, I don't do Java. I do Apache Spark and Scala. Well, Scala is written, or Apache Spark is written in Scala, which executes on top of the JVM. We're not making Java go faster, we're making the JVM go faster. So, you can see the dash lines are x86 performance, and the solid lines is a Spark processor. So I'm saying general processing performance, 1.6 to 2.1x faster per core. That's all of your licensing costs and so forth. We can do even better than that, but let me show you the actual Java performance. So in the red bar, you can see this is the spec JBB benchmark, and you can see in the red bar, just focus on the bar graph, that's the Spark processor on Java performance versus the last two generations of x86. Notice no, no real change there. So as I said earlier, part of the reason this is important is look all the things that are either written in Java or execute on the JVM. And that's what we've been focusing on and you can see Apache Spark there. But it's more than that. Some of you probably also use the other parts of the SMAC stack, Spark, um, Mesos, Akka, Cassandra, Kafka. Here's Cassandra performance on a per core basis. You can see the Spark processor, 2x faster per core performance on that. But let's get back to other parts of big data. How did all of this come about? Well. 
in the Oracle database, we said, what's really going on? We're, we are not looking at four features of demographics in the database anymore. We are talking about hundreds of features that you want to do machine learning on, uh, all kinds of data. Um, and big data, to me, is kind of a misnomer. The real important thing is big features. We have so many behaviors and features that we want to do analysis to. So what we really want to do in the Oracle database or in Apache Spark is get to those features. So how can we do that efficiently? And you've heard other people talk about doing things columnar and in memory. So that's what we're focused on. So quick digression. This is like the last thing I'll say about the Oracle database. We put in the Oracle database, we have row format that we've had for a very long time. We added columnar in memory to store the features so we could be very efficient of going down the columns, filtering the data, and so forth. And we can compress it and put it in memory. So this has been in production in the Oracle database for the past three to five years now. And we said, you know what? We can do even better than just having that software innovation we can do a hardware innovation to it. We could take those common SQL functions and put them into silicon. So that's what we did. So in the, this is data from the Oracle database. I'll show you Apache Spark SQL in a minute. We use the exact same technology. So as you can see, 9.4 times faster per core than x86. And by the way, the E5 V4 is the latest Broadwell that was just announced. So this isn't like we're looking at some old x86 here. And the other thing you'll notice, up at the top, I put 14 billion rows per second per core. Now, Matei, earlier today, talked about Apache Spark 2.1 at 150 million rows per second. So clearly we're doing a lot more. So that's what hardware is allowing us to do. Software got us to 150 million. Hardware can push us up over the top there. So how did we end up doing that? Here's a picture. If you look at the Spark S7, which is one of our latest generation Spark processors, what we did was we took 1% of the silicon area and we put the, the scan processing into hardware. So you can read data out of memory in a columnar format, do a range scan, compare to two predicate range scan, and then return the various results of what you're doing. And we did that in software, and as you can see, the offload, which means we don't have the cores do that. We have the DAX, the data accelerator, do that. The cores are now free for all of that other processing that's going on. In x86 or in IBM Power, in order to do that filtering that you need to do, they end up using the graphics instructions. They end up using all of the cores to make that happen. The other thing we do is you notice bandwidth. Those lines are to scale. We have twice the memory bandwidth per core, because if you're going to do analysis on lots of data, it's about how quickly you can read through data. And I, as I say here, you know, innovation is really the critical thing. It's more important, you know, Moore's law, as Matei talked about earlier, is how many transistors you can put on a chip. That just tells you how many things you make. It doesn't say how you use them. So in the exact same way that Apache Spark has done innovations, we're doing innovations as well. Some of you may think, well, GPUs are also innovations. Isn't this just like what GPUs do? Well, GPUs sit on the end of an I.O. device or the, the PCIe or NVLink, and you can compare the lines here. These are bandwidth lines all to scale. So, Having a detached GPU is not going to give you the same performance as what I'm talking about. So let's look at SQL. What's going on in SQL processing? So here's a very simple query written in a couple of different ways. In SQL, you might say, select count star from person where citizen age is greater than 18. Basically, you're trying to get a count of those of voting age in the US. So that's how you'd write it in SQL. 
but you can also write it as we do here with the dot filters and dot counts. And so that's the exact same expression in, in um, Scala to do that within Apache Spark SQL. Java Streams, some of you may have heard about it. It's a way of using Java to write the same kind of filtering. So here we have int voters, array, list, parallel stream, dot filter, citizen older than 18 to a count of them. Exact same function. Apache Eclipse, which came out of Goldman Sachs collections, basically the same kind of thing. They put the predicate within the scan. So if we're looking at this in the database or in Apache Spark SQL or Java Streams or Apache Eclipse, it's all the same kind of functions. These are the functions that we're accelerating with DAX. So we did an experiment and we looked at what we could do in Java 8 with uh, Java Streams. And look at the performance. This is Java Streams just linked in um, an import um, basically to do that same SQL processing. Outlier detection, 3.6 times faster. All match, 21.8 times faster. So this is what happens when you add hardware and software innovation together. Now, Apache Spark, one of the great things about Apache Spark that I love is the Catalyst Optimizer. You write SQL, as shown um, on the left there, or you can write it in DSL. You know, you can see the dot filters, dot joins, dot order buys. The great thing about Apache Spark is it takes either version, puts it into the Catalyst Optimizer. So if your filtering was done in the wrong operation that was inefficient, it'll do the flipping and so forth. And there's presentations on that um, today. So great thing about it. So let's get to, this is the real quick math that I did on Apache Spark 2.1. Um, we did a testing on Haswell, the previous generation, 104 million rows per second, sounded pretty good. Um, Matei showed you 150 million for a different query, but is that impressive? Going back to first principles, as it turns out, that's not nearly a high enough rate, even on x86. That's showing 14 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. We should be getting 114 on that particular x86 chip. But we can do even better than that because with heart, so we started with the Volcano Interpreter, interpreting data as it came by. Then uh, Reynolds Zinn talked about college freshmen, which is what Project Tungsten is about. We can take that to one more level by having well-written vectorized code. And then we run that well-written vectorized code on the Spark DAX. So how did that turn out? With the Spark DAX, accelerating Apache Spark 2.1, our proof of concept of a two predicate range scan is showing 15.6x faster per core than x86. So, and this shows you the billions of rows per second and all of that. This is a proof of concept. What we wanna do is, and what we've been talking to various developers is, um, we wanna take this interface, this open API interface shown at the bottom and integrate it into Apache Spark so it'll help x86 performance and help Spark processor performance. So those of you who are developers, the other thing we really need to push for is data frames, not just with decoders taking the types back and forth, but dictionary encoded data, and we can scan directly on that dictionary encoded data. So these are techniques that we have put into the Oracle database that we are trying to get contributed back into Apache Spark as well. Again, we made an open API for this. It's been in the Oracle database, ActiveVM, which does a lot of in-memory query processing, Oracle streams, and what you saw in Apache Spark SQL. The other thing I think is really important is, is us not thinking of analytics as a pipeline. In other words, have our data source, data munch, analytics. Everyone talks this way. Analytics is really a cycle. We bring in data, we create features, we do some analysis and machine learning, we get out our results, 
but we keep going round and round again. So in memory is the one thing that's critical to accelerate what we're doing. Uh, and then you may be wondering the Spark processor, okay, it was good at DAX. How is it at graph? Here's this graph performance. Again, it depends on memory bandwidth. So you can see 1.5x faster per core. We also looked at machine learning. Here is the training size, up to 2x faster per core. Um, and we got to remember that in machine learning, there's the training and learning, which everyone likes to talk about, but then there's the scoring the data. And that really depends on the processor memory bandwidth. And as you can see, look here at the Spark processor advantage per core. So I just wanted to give you guys a really quick overview of what we're trying to do, but I think these kinds of innovations are critical, and if you work in these various areas like machine learning into Apache Spark, we need to get more advanced algorithms that are using higher level kinds of things. So thank you for the time. It's exciting to be involved with Apache Spark, and I think if we bring the hardware innovations we're talking about and more software innovations, we're going to see a lot of great things. Thank you.